On this episode of the Press Rewind Prince Lyrics Podcast, I'm going to be talking about something that's furry, cuddly, and fat. It's Velvet Kitty Cat from the Purple Rain Deluxe Edition from 2017. Velvet Kitty Cat was recorded in April of 1983 at Sunset Sound Studios, two days after Prince Fire, Jimmy Jam, and Terry Lewis from the Times. So that gives us a little context of where Prince's head was at when he was recording the song. He had just let go two of his closest friends and longtime members of the time. And, uh, you know, the story about how they had left town to, or left the tour to go produce uh, an album, and Prince did not appreciate them leaving the tour that they were on at the time. And, uh, and instead of just, like, finding them or chastising them, I guess this was, like, the last straw, or he must have felt this was... A violation of trust and loyalty so he fired them obviously jimmy jam and terry lewis had gone on have gone on to have great success in uh, the field of music production so much so that they were just recently elected to the rock and roll hall of fame here in cleveland ohio so according to prince vault the song was recorded in a session with other songs for the time as they were listed as the artist on these sessions on the session logs but no one from the time is believed to have participated in this particular recording session with that said there is a belief that these were songs that were in consideration for either vanity six's second album likely vanity six's second album or potentially the Apollonia 6 album, but if we're talking April of 83, that still was Vanity 6. This would have absolutely been a Vanity 6 song. Uh, the singer, you know, which member of the Vanity 6 group that would sing the song, I don't know, but, you know, spring of 83, that was still the main group. It wouldn't morph into Apollonia 6 until the following fall. There's also a more of a rockabilly version of this song with the revolution helping out on the recording from May of 1985. And I guess it was even considered for the Parade album, which would come out the following year in 86. But it was removed from the track listing. And for some reason, that 85 version is... I haven't heard it. I, I, I'm not going to say it's impossible to find or it's been unleaked because I, I don't know all I can tell you is that I've never heard the 85 version with the revolution all I've heard is this 83 version that was just Prince and likely a guide vocal for a member of Vanity 6 to sing on but again that's speculation but uh, I don't know you listen to the lyrics and as we go through them we I will point out moments in the song I think where you kind of have to believe that this was intended for a female vocalist. There is also speculation that this 83 song is an updated version of a song from 19, all the way back in 1981 that was called uh, Mink Kitty Cat, which was being recorded and written for, you know, uh, Vanity Six. 0.5 and that was the hookers you know the hookers morphed into vanity 6 which then morphed into apollonia 6 as vanity left the group and apollonia joined so mink kitty cat potentially for the hookers velvet kitty cat potentially for vanity 6 velvet kitty cat potentially for prince and the revolution ultimately none of these songs were ever officially released in prince's lifetime the song is, is basically one long innuendo about a woman's vagina. It's, it's really no way else that you could interpret this song, I don't think. <laughs> uh, I, I may be wrong. I've been wrong before, and I will be wrong again, I'm sure. But that has always been the, and when I say always, over the past six years, that is the version, or that is the interpretation of, of this version of the song that I that I get when I listen to it it's it's Prince doing a lot of innuendo 
Um, not unlike Scarlet Pussy, which came out later in the 80s as a B-side during the, um, what was that, during the Love Sexy era. Uh, the lyrics aren't very subtle, you know, and other, other songs that, besides ones that Prince did, that lack subtlety in the lyrics, but still, you know, skirt that line between vulgar and acceptable radio-friendly song. <laughs> I guess, um, you know, if, if you're a a rock fan in the late 80s, you would have heard the song Cherry Pie by Warrant, and that is a very similar style song about a woman's uh, private parts. Um, but, I mean, if we're talking Prince, not even songs that he wrote for himself, like Little Red Corvette, also innuendo-laden, but I think the most blatant innuendo song about a woman's vagina that Prince wrote that became a big hit for Sheen Easton would be, of course, Sugar Walls. So this is kind of like a precursor to that. You know, even even if this was going to be a Vanity Six song, you know, Vanity Six had some pretty raunchy songs on their only album. I Need Seven Inches or More, Vanity Sings, on Nasty Girl. So, <laughs> hmm. Um, again, we... That kind of stuff, like if you're young, like well, I was young in 82, 83. Too young to really understand what that was referring to. But any anybody who was an adult would have picked up on that right away. And I'm sure that the song did not get as much radio airplay as it could have because of lines like that. And there are plenty of other songs that Prince wrote for female artists in the early 80s that certainly certainly straddle that line and oftentimes tip over the the edge of of vulgarity and decency the filthy 15 was you know created as kind of an an outcome of the popularity of artists like prince artists like um, twisted sister artists like Sheena Easton, Cyndi Lauper, Madonna. And it wasn't always about sex. I mean, there were, um, you know, references to drugs that the PMRC really wanted to, to make sure that parents knew were incorporated into the, into the lyrics of these songs. There was sexual references they were, they were wanting to have more visibility on drug references, occult references, violent references, anything that a parent might think is inappropriate for younger ears, they wanted to know before buying the record that it was going to be a part of the music that they were buying for their child. So they wouldn't have to like listen to it themselves, but <laughs> they would know without having to listen to it if it was okay or not. And that, that's obviously an aside. I mean, Velvet Kitty Cat is is not even close to one of Prince's filthiest 15. But it's certainly, the innuendo is laid, laid on heavy. And it is not subtle whatsoever. You want to rock? You want to roll, my Velvet Kitty Cat. She's man's best friend, furry, cuddly, and fat. Take a swing, you're up to bat, Velvet Kitty Cat. So, like, every line in this, you can interpret to be, to have some sort of sexual connotations, you know, metaphors. You want to rock, you want to roll. Rock and roll is often, at least when it was first um, kind of brought to the, the mainstream, it was looked at as being a very... Uh, sexually driven form of music. Elvis the Pelvis, Little Richard, they were looked at as uh, potentially dangerous. Um, Jerry Lee Lewis, 
all because of the way that the rock and roll music made the kids feel, the way that they moved their bodies when performing this music. Mainstream audiences, mostly white, of course, uh, were equally afraid and thrilled, depending on their generation. So the kids were, of course, very intrigued by it. The parents were appalled, for the most part. So rock and roll and sex have always gone hand in hand since the beginning of that genre. My Velvet Kitty Cat, she's man's best friend, furry, cuddly, and fat. So here he's, again, doubling down on the cat and vagina metaphor. Although man's best friend is more typically being referred to as, um, you know, members of the canine species. So dogs are typically called man's best friend, not cats. But again, this is why this song is not really talking about cats. And when he says man's best friend here, he literally means the male species, you know, the gender, not mankind as man's best friend being a dog is more referring to mankind, not you know, a specific gender. Here, he's talking about men, like heterosexual men. Calling furry, cuddly, and fat. Okay, <laughs> you can, you know, uh, you can take all those words and apply it to a female body part if you want to. Prince certainly was doing it. Take a swing, you're up to bat. Another innuendo. Uh, taking a swing... Swinging for the fences, hitting a home run, having sex. You know, you got the different bases. Hitting a home run is, of course, going all the way. And swinging, you can, you know, talk about a man swinging something. Well, they would be swinging their genitalia in this case. So, again, the lyrics are not deep. They're not, they're not exactly subtle. But, you know, it's it's fun to pick apart and listen to when you're just thinking of it as a kind of a, a pseudo-raunchy Prince track. Every day and all night, my velvet kitty cat. Mmm, wish she had a boyfriend, but they were all rats. There was nothing underneath their hats, sad kitty cat. The men were all rats here is kind of the line that sticks out to me in this the section of lyrics just because if Prince is wanting a woman to sing this song, it makes sense for for her as the pursued object of desire that she would have you know, maybe maybe a, a jaded look at dating, a jaded look at relationships, especially if she's been pursued for her her beauty or her body as this song implies that she probably is and again saying my velvet kitty cat you can you can definitely think of a woman singing that so a man or a woman could say that because my velvet kitty cat if a man says it he's referring to and i know it's it's not right to call a woman a man's possession that's not okay but I think that's how you would have to interpret this if a man was going to sing it. Like, my velvet kitty cat, meaning my girlfriend or my wife's or my significant other's velvet kitty cat. Not the one that's on me. <laughs> Which, of course, if it's a woman then singing it, they might be talking about, you know, their own sexual power and, and what it is that they bring. Um, bring to a relationship. And also, kind of like... Kellis's milkshake. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. My velvet kitty cat brings all the rats to the yard. Uh, wish, she, wish she had a boyfriend, but they were all rats. There was nothing underneath their hats, meaning they were, um, you know, I wouldn't say dumb, but certainly not the most intellectual stimulating for this person. Maybe had one-track minds, and they weren't really Again, stimulating her brain the way they stimulated her body. I don't want no money, no fancy cars. That ain't where it's at. I just want a boy to eat up all my cookies till he gets fat. I want true love, and that's that, Velvet Kitty Cat. 
So I guess what this verse is really trying to hammer home is that, again, a common theme in a lot of Prince's music, it isn't about having a lot of money and, and material things. Don't want no money or fancy cars. Just want somebody to, quote unquote, eat up all my cookies till it gets fat or, you know, basically treat me right. Um, want to be with me spend time with me and treat me like a queen in the bedroom I guess I want true love and that's that so instead of making the song simply about the physical Prince likes to make sure that uh, there's a little more substance that is desired by the subjects of a lot of his more raunchier, um, innuendo-laden songs. Yeah, some of them are, are, like Horny Toad, for example, are not about that. Horny Toad is literally just about a horny, horny person, horny toad, horny man, that isn't going to do anything but, you know, try to get off. But I would say the majority of these songs try to sprinkle in some language around it not just being about sex that it can also and should also be about true love or at least about respect for each other and this this velvet kitty cat in this song is certainly looking for that as well she's she's had to kiss a lot of frogs another uh frog metaphor there She's kissed a lot of frogs. They don't seem to have what it takes to stick around, whether it's intellect or they're, they show their true colors once they're with Velvet Kitty Cat. But she, she wants something more. You want to rock, you want to roll, my Velvet Kitty Cat. She's man's best friend, furry, cuddly, and fat. I'll let you pet her, but then you got to scat, Velvet Kitty Cat. And again, if you're thinking of this being sung by the perspective of a woman, I guess she's still okay with one-night stands or meaningless sexual encounters if it's a means to an end, because she's like, I'll let you pet her, wink, wink. But you gotta scat. Like, I don't really need you to stick around. You're not the one. So it's a little bit confusing because in the previous verse, it's written as if she wants someone to, you know, to be her one and only, the boy that eats up all their cookies and true love. But then in the very next verse, she's okay with quickies or one night stands or you know meaningless sex if it feels good but i don't need you to be my boyfriend in this moment you gotta scat and if this was being sung by a man it would be a little more sketchy when you think of it that way because like he's he's what he's uh pimping her out <laughs> you can pet my girl's velvet kitty cap, but then you gotta go. Uh, okay. So, are you a pimp? Are you... Or are you just, you know, part of this, uh, open relationship and you're finding men for her? I, I mean, I don't know. That's... Again, I still believe that it's probably written for Vanity's group. And this was likely going to be sung by a woman, so I think that interpretation is probably off the table as a result of that. But it would be weird. <laughs> and it's, it sounds a little weird when you hear Prince sing it because it is seemingly as if he's offering up his his girl for others to enjoy. Um, I want true love and that's that, Velvet Kitty Cat. You can pet her, but then you gotta scat, Velvet Kitty Cat. So just repeating some lines, you know, and also some conflicting lines. I want true love, but then you can pet her, but you got to scat. So again, they, they're kind of in conflict with each other. Those, those notions, at least again, in my interpretation of the song, they're a bit 
in conflict with each other. So I don't really quite understand where Prince is going with that and wanting to repeat those specific lines. As the, they're the last lines that we hear in the song. So, whew, that's Velvet Kitty Cat. It's um, it's a fun little song, but it's it's nothing. It's nothing serious, you know. It's not. It's not deep. It's not serious. It's not anything that deserves a lot of dissection. I don't think. And you know, there's a reason why it wasn't used finally i don't i have no idea where the song would have fit in with the parade project none whatsoever i don't i would kind of like to hear what the prince and the revolution the prince and the revolution version of this song sounds like but i think it probably sounds fairly similar this already has a little bit of a rockabilly feel to it so just adding more guitars maybe i mean there's already guitar in the song but it's mostly synthesizer drum machine and around this time there was a big hit on the on the charts by the stray cats called stray cat strut so maybe prince had heard stray cat strut was thinking "Ooh, cats are an interesting an interesting angle to take for an innuendo filled song but then if you also believe that this is a reinterpretation of his a song he wrote in 81 called Mink Kitty Cat, then no, that they wouldn't have any connection at all, because that came out before Straight Cat Strut. So, you know, he probably already had this in mind. I mean, it's right there. Vagina, pussy, pussy cat, it's just <laughs> kitty cat. It, the dotted lines are not so dotted, it's more like a straight line, so <laughs> not not too difficult to to figure out where he was where his head was at when he was writing the song so that will be it for velvet kitty cat this has been the press rewind prince lyrics podcast i've been your host jason brenninger thanks again for listening uh, and until next time goodbye <laughs>